Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevail. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Amen. Amen. How many are ready for the word today? We are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray and put a demand on the Spirit of the Lord to be our teacher. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for you. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you that Holy Spirit is our teacher today. We thank you, Lord, that you give us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And all the people of God said, yes and amen and amen. The power of the Spirit of the Lord is so powerful, yet we just take it for granted. We don't always walk like we should. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has given us insights today. They give you a, re a revelation knowledge on why do we pray in tongues. How many would like to know why? We got one. Yes. Praying in tongues talks to God. Praying in tongues talks to God. Pray in tongues to prepare for the teaching. How many have done that? You pray in tongues and you say, Lord, I'm on my way to church or it's Saturday and I want to prepare myself so my spirit's ready to receive. Yes, in Jesus' name. I want to be where you are. How many know things can get in our way and we let, we let things dictate to us rather than we say, no, I've made a commitment to the Lord, I'm going to be in church to hear His Word. I have to be there. I need to be there. Let me understand what you're saying. So, when I was an evangelist, I had opportunity to do several Bible schools and stuff and teachings. And there were some awesome ministers that were coming to town. We're talking five powerful ministers from around the world were coming to town. Guess what day they came to teach? on the day that I had my Bible school, Tuesday. Guess what? Only about six out of the 30 people came to my t Tuesday Bible teaching because they ran off to the other teachers. You know what? I could have just closed down the church and just gone over there, right? But my commitment was to the Lord that I was going to do this regardless of what they come or not. If you don't come to church, I'll preach it anyway. And they're the ones who don't get the message. And so that day, they went over there, and they came back the next week and wanted to know what I said. Well, I already did it. It's already gone. You missed. You see, well, Robert, that doesn't sound like, hey, there was these ten virgins, and five of them didn't bring oil. And they wanted the other ones to give them some. He said, no, go get your own. And when they went and got their own, they came back, but phew, the door shut the Lord he come. It's important. And a lot of people take this stuff for granted. And I'll tell you what, it's a real world out there and there's a real devil and people get beat up. But if you know something and you know what it says to do and then you participate, yes. I need to talk to God because I can't see all the time in the spirit world unless he opens up my eyes of understanding to see in the spirit realm. How about you? You don't see it every day. And so... If you don't know what's going to happen, it's important to pray and talk to God. Amen? So praying in tongues prepares me for the teaching. I need, as the pastor, I need to be prepared. I want to know what the Lord says. And I've always given the Lord this insight. Whatever it is, I got planned, and you say something, your plan uh, trumps my plan, and your plan is what we do. I don't ever have any problem with that at all. None whatsoever. And I've had him change me, and it's not a problem. I don't mind. I don't get upset. Because what he has to say is more important. So the way I see it now is God's given me a plan to share with you. That's him talking to you, not me. And so if you don't want to be in Jesus' feet, that's up to you. I'm not going to sit here and make you do something you don't want to do. That's between you and the Lord. But there's going to be a time in the day when you needed to know something and you didn't, and you skipped class, so to speak. And you missed out on that. And you wish you had had that at the time you needed it. So I'm just saying as your pastor, it's very important to be 
prepared and to know and to act and to operate in the things that you learn here in Jesus name because as a good teacher it doesn't do you any good to teach the kids the alphabet if they don't say it. Doesn't do you any good to tell them the multiplications unless they say it. Doesn't do them any good to, to, read, to teach them how to read a book if they don't read the books. What good is it to go to school then? Just why don't you go over there and go sit down and I'll get some people that want this. How I many know what I'm saying? You know what I'm finding out? There's a lot of people that are just getting old and slow and don't really care anymore. And I'm thinking, wow, boy, have they been listening to the devil and letting their eyes of their, the lust of their eyes look at stuff and get, get swayed away. And all through that time you're swayed away, you, you start having depressed thoughts. And you start thinking that nobody loves you and God doesn't love me and ah, blah, blah, blah. That's because you hadn't paid attention. And Miriam just got through reading the word. That in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. Pay attention to my word, says the word of God. The word. Why is he here? Because his word is truth. Truth sets you free. Amen. So we want to learn to pray in tongues. And we want to pray in tongues to release the anointing and prepares our spirit to receive from God. I need the anointing of God. I need that anointing factor. And if you know anything about multiplication and exponential, I need it. Why? Because there's people in here that need prayer, and I need the Holy Spirit to come upon them when I'm praying for them to get them well. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, what about you? Aren't you going to lay hands on people and expect the anointing to come on you to pray for those? Yeah. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So this is what the Apostle Paul expected the early church to do. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And he wanted them spirit-filled so they could have a teacher. His name is Jesus. Amen. So... Before you can be released majorly in God, in you mightily, you need to be highly edified. When I say majorly, when I say highly edified, you need that to happen in your spirit to the highest degree of capacity. So if you're a little pot, and you only have 10 measures, are you at the top spiritually, mightily, majorly in the Holy Ghost? Right now you're ready to roll. You go out and you come out of a movie. Right now you're ready to go. Right in the movie somebody has a heart attack. You know what to do. You're right there. You're on top of it. You're mightily set in the things of God. You're number 10. So you need to be at the highest degree of capacity. And the gifts of God operate best at a high level of edification and demand. Now we know there are nine gifts of the Lord. So which one of those work in you? Shouldn't they all be working in you? Shouldn't you understand all spiritual things? Scrutinize, examine, ex investigate? Aren't you where your spirit is with you all the time? You have the knowledge of God? Say thank you Lord. So, I wrote down these things in this teaching, and it turned out to be our spiritual warfare prayer after I did the teaching. So, I'm going to go through this. So, the first thing you want to do, you're praying. Okay? You're only praying in English at this moment. You pray first to break free of any areas of sin in your life. Be bold and conf confrontive in dealing with these areas. You do not want to overlook any area. How many know if you're doing some stuff and you know you shouldn't be doing it, you need to say, no, look, I'm going to stop. I'm repenting. I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I give you my word, Lord. And then you, a few months later, you start sliding back. No. If you're going to be highly degree at the top, number 10, spiritually, then you need to get rid of some stuff. You declare that you are righteous. And you forgive other people. People get in your way and they say stupid stuff. You have to forgive them, regardless if they accept it or not. It's your responsibility. And then you also have to break the effect of words that you have spoken. 
You have spoken words that are not nice to things. You have to break off those effects that you have spoken. Then you need to break off words others have spoken against you. We do that a lot. But we forget about the own words that we speak. And you also need to repent from bad relationships. There are people in this world that will pull you away from the things of God. And they say things, and they laugh, and you think it's funny, and you laugh, and you go, what am I doing this for? This is ridiculous. I'm just going to set myself free. Now, I have set myself free from different areas of playing pool. I'm starting to see it's the Lord that's moving me. I'm saying, thank you, Lord. So you repent from bad relationships. Number two, pray to break through in personal areas of your own life. Okay? There are areas of fear. There are areas of worry. There are areas of anxiety, concern, and future. You've got to get through this stuff. You can't let that dawdle on you and put you down. You've got to break through it. You have to cast your cares on the Lord. We're saying, man, I'm telling you, I'm having a hard time with this. I give this to you, Lord. And when you give it to the Lord with a wholeheartedly, with, I expect to be healed. And he knows your heart. You can't lie to the Lord. You can't fake him out. You can't just con the Lord. You can't just, oh, you know. No. I'm trying, Lord. Thank good enough. Number three, break, pray to break areas where the enemy is working in your life. Okay? If it's in your body like sickness, get rid of it. You can't be sick and try to do the word, Lord's work. It just doesn't work. Sometimes the enemy's working in friends that you associate with. Sometimes the, the enemy is working in your family. You need to pray and break that stuff off of these people. Off of yourself, off of your friends, off of your family, and off of your own body. And maybe you've got areas where the enemy is working in your finances. Mary and I talked about that. Oh, I, can't, I don't have enough money to tithe. I, I, I. Shut up, devil. I got a nickel. I can give that. I got a dollar. I can give that. I have a hundred dollars, a bottom pants. I could have put that in the Lord's Burg. How many understand? You got money. It's just, where are you doing with it? If you're not doing like the Lord's telling you, you need to break the devil that's coming against you in Jesus' name. And finally, bind the enemy and command the loosening and the release of it in the name of Jesus with an expectation that it's done when you've spoken it in Jesus' name. Do you understand why we're praying in tongues? Say, thank you, Lord. And number four, pray to place a demand on your spirit to commune with God so that the Holy Spirit starts praying through you. Now, I can pray, and I know my spirit, and my spirit prays a whole lot differently than I hear your spirit praying. But when I'm praying, I know when the Holy Spirit kicks in. And man, it's a whole different way of ball game. So you got to put a demand, okay? The lights are on, the electricity's flowing, and there's a demand on that electricity to flow into this room and turn on those lights. So you have to put a demand on your spirit to get the power of God to flow through you to get your spirit to start hearing the Holy Spirit pray through you. Otherwise, your carnal mind will mar the gifts of God. Meaning, God starts giving you a word to speak out in public, and all of a sudden you start putting your own two cents in it. And you're not highly edified when you do that. You must be completely loosed, set free in the spirit realm. You cannot have any pulls on you. You can't have all this stuff. So like I said, You've got to get rid of sin in your own life. You've got to be, declare that you're righteous in Jesus' name. You have to forgive others. Break the effect of words you have spoken. Repent from bad relationships. Pray to break through in personal areas such as fear, worry, anxiety, concern, and future. You have to cast your cares on the Lord. You pray to break the areas where the enemy is working in your life, such as in your body or in sickness, friends, family, finances. And you need to bind the devil and be totally released and free from that. 
And then you put a demand on your spirit to commune with God so that the Holy Spirit and your spirit are praying. And there is a difference than just praying in tongues. There, uh, when the Holy Spirit starts praying through me, it's, I can only do it for a short period. It is such a demand on you. But I'm telling you something. When that happens, things happen in the spirit realm. Because it's you and God speaking to God. It's amazing. So let's go through some teaching now. All right. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 23 through 33, we're going to read that these people were spirit-filled and they released the spirit for anointing. Capture this. Okay? And being let go, they went to their own company. and That's like coming to church. Okay? And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to who? God, with one accord, and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Okay? Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Man, that happens to us today too, doesn't it? Okay? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever they had in they hand and they counseled, determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their thoughts threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost twice. And the multitudes of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, and neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. So what is great power? Healing the sick, casting out devils, demonstrating to their generation that Jesus Christ is alive. So, in this particular study, these people release the Spirit for anointing. Have you sought the Lord for anointing and asking the Spirit of the Lord to give you the anointing to speak His word with boldness instead of sitting back and being a timid little mouse afraid of the cat? You get out there and say, Get out of here, cat. And the cat leaves. Now, in Acts chapter 16, 6 through 10, this is an example of the word of wisdom. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. So, a word of wisdom Things taking place in the spirit. So Paul understood in a dream, it was called a vision, why he's sleeping. He saw what to do. Oh, I don't remember anything I dream about. Why not? Maybe you need to get rid of the devil that's stopping you from understanding your dreams. There can be some stuff going on. You understand that the Spirit of the Lord talks to you all day, every day, every moment. And if you're not capturing his thoughts, you need to find out why. Maybe there's something that you need to do. Like I talked about, get rid of some of the areas that the devil's working in your own life. 
It's an important part to identify, locate, and eradicate. Now here's another example of the word of knowledge. You understand what I'm talking about? Why do we speak in tongues? We want these gifts to function how? Majorly in God, mightily, and to be at a high degree of capacity. Why is it that none of you and all of you are not praying in tongues when we do after worship and giving a word? Because you're not totally at the top. And when are you going to do that? At home, hearing the voice of the Lord, expecting to hear his voice, getting here early, coming all the time, asking questions and learning. Say amen. So here's a word of knowledge. Acts chapter 14, verse 8 through 10. And there sat a certain man at, at Lystra, impotent in his feet being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never had walked. Talk about an impossible situation. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly, beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Now, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Paul is perceiving in his spirit that the man had faith to be healed and nobody's saying a word. It's all done by the Holy Spirit in the spirit of Paul. And said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Isn't that amazing? From birth. But what happened is we got to identify what's going on. That man had probably never heard the gospel before, and all of a sudden he's hearing hope is rising up on the inside of him and liking what he's hearing about the power of God. And Paul seeing in that man, by the Spirit of the Lord, he had faith, and he spoke to him, Get up! Walk! And immediately he did. So when pastor stops to you and tells you this is going to happen, you need to go, Yes! And receive it in the name of Jesus. Now here is an example of discerning of spirits. Okay, I hope you're identifying what I'm teaching. The gifts of God function mightily and best when you're full capacity with the things of God. So the gifting of word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. I'm showing you how they function in the scriptures so they should be working in you, in Jesus' name. Okay? Now, Acts chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, by prophetically speaking over people. The same followed Paul and us. Now notice when we're going to prayer, when this happens. When you start going to prayer, does something come along to kind of mess up with you? These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, what's being said is awesome words, but how it's being said. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, not to the lady, but to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Now, we're looking for the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. The dis gift of discerning of spirits did not manifest for instantaneous, but it took many days. And, when, and she did this many days. Finally, it, it grieves her spirit. He's starting to go, there's something wrong with what's going on here. That's not right, even though she's saying the right words. So the gifts manifest at high capacity when you are highly edified. Now, we know, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, that you are to do edify, right? Okay? Nancy comes up and gives us an exhortation. But the only way you're going to get edified in your spirit is to pray in tongues Pray in tongues with an expectation for that anointing to come upon you for the gifting of the spirits in the name of Jesus for, so you can see into the spirit realm and identify, look, and get rid of stuff. You need a word of wisdom, <laughs> the practical application of knowledge. You need the word of knowledge, 
on how, what to do. And you need discerning the spirit so you can see into the realm what's going on. If you go to pray for somebody and you see a spirit operating, you break the power of that enemy, they're going to get well really fast. Say, thank you, Jesus. So, by spiritually being ready to receive the gifts of the spirit, by the laying on of hands, be ready to receive that anointing. So if you want that, if you want that, are you ready to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Are you ready to be highly edified? Are you ready for the, for the Holy Spirit to come upon you and give you the blessing? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready? Because if you're not, then just sit there. But if you're ready, you come up here and I will lay hands on you and the gifting of the Spirit, you will receive that anointing on your life right now. I don't care if you're in the back room. I don't care where you are. If that's what you want, then you better get up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shambre basi tele brosho do la masite di dambra sanana masa. Receive the anointing now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on up here quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Get up here. You're 10 feet tall. You're going to hit the chair. Now, receive that anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You ready to receive that anointing, Ken? You ready? Yeah. Okay, come over here. Get ready. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fill, fill. Phil, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fill him up now. Thank you, Lord. You have it. Start praying in tongues. Go. Go. Yes, you can. You did it once before. Do it again. Don't talk to me doubt and unbelief. Start speaking in tongues. Close your eyes and start praying. Ah, oh. Just like that. Ah, oh, sho, do, la. Go. Go. Open up. Let it go. Let it go. Go. Speak. Go. Make syllables. Go. Ah, no. Bronso do la masha yata la masam nan di parason. You want to have it majorly edify, you have to pray in tongues, Ken. Come on. Out of your belly flow river of living water. Come on. Out with your mouth. Go ahead. Ah. Go like that. Ah. Oh. Come on. Ah, oh, fa, so, lama, shoto, la, pardana, si, te, lamba. Good job, you're doing it. Keep it up. Good job, thank you, Jesus. A little bit faster, Kim. A little bit quicker. Don't think about it, just do it. Good job, Ken. Keep it up in Jesus' name. Keep praying. Then I can hear you over here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Mightily in Jesus' mighty name. Whoa! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We glorify your name. We thank you for all that you've done in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit and all the people of God said, Yes, and amen, and amen. Mightily, in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video, and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did, amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know, so give us a call at 503-652-2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. 
So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Ryder.